My name is Ryan Soder. I am in charge of training and quality control on the retail side uh, of Center Goss, although I do help with some wholesale stuff as well. Um, develop training materials, make sure our drinks are tasting on par or better. Um, and we're talking about what influences the flavor of coffee outside of roasting and brewing. So the first thing we deal with is the type of variety that we are planting, harvesting, and processing. Uh, just like apples, like you would never go to Kroger or Whole Foods and just like get an apple. You know exactly what you're there for and coffee is no different than that. Um, so a, a Bourbon tastes very different than a Tipica, tastes very different from a Mondo Novo or Pacamara. So like the, the actual type of coffee plant we're dealing with has a pretty big effect on what the coffee is going to taste like. Um, so first of all, if, if you were to own a coffee farm and be a producer, you would think about what coffee varieties am I dealing with and how are we going to treat those plants. Uh, then processing, which is everything that happens between taking the coffee fruit off the tree and putting it in a bag to ship across the world. And then like at the end, just how good a job you did with both of those things means if it, if it worked or not. So at the end of that, you could have like something that tastes kind of moldy and dusty if you let it sit for too long. Or we could have something taste like bright, sweet, and fruity if you did everything really right. It depends on how each of those processes go. Oh my God, but then like how long it's been since you picked it has a huge effect. So whether that green coffee has been sitting in a bag for nine months, it'll start to go stale and flat. Uh, and every coffee is different. Some last longer than others, but like freshness windows are appropriate uh, to think about in any, any form of coffee. So green coffee lasts you know, as long as nine months and then it starts to kind of get cardboardy after that. Um, so how long, how well it's being stored, what kind of packaging it's being stored in, um, how much you're separating that coffee seed from the rest of the environment matters a lot. So the significance of each of the variables that coffee passes through, I guess, before it hits the roaster would be variety, is like your your core or your base. Like what kind of flavors do I want to start with the potential to have? Whereas Tipica tends to be a little more crisp and apple-y, Bourbon tends to be a little more deep and like deeply caramelly sweet. So you're starting with like, what kind of flavors am I going for? Uh, and then drawing out those flavors would be like, when, at what ripeness do I, do I pick this off the tree? Um, some varieties reach peak ripeness at like cherry red, whereas others reach peak ripeness at, or peak sweetness rather, at like more of a burgundy or a darker. So knowing when to pick each variety is really important. Um, that will have a lot to do with the sweetness uh, of the coffee. And then processing is huge. Um, natural processed coffees tend to have more f like berry fruit, more musty, pulpy fruit whereas wash process tends to be more crisp and clean. So that'll kind of overlay that flavor on top of the coffee. Um, and then really from there, my understanding is that it's more about trying to preserve the flavors you're going for and just not mess it up. So you wanna dry it to between um, like 10 to 11% moisture content in the bean. We don't wanna do it too fast or too slow because that can result in off flavors. Um, so a lot of it is deciding based on the variety what flavors you're going for and then based on the, the washing method, what flavors you're gonna overlay on top of that, and then keeping that sweet and clean by not contributing off flavors, um, by either like not washing enough or letting it soak for too long or too short or drying it on the patio uh, for too long or too short as well. Yeah, to me, and this is assuming that everything has gone well, right? So we'll assume that like all of the steps were done in a way that didn't distract from the way a coffee tastes. For me, processing, like whether it's washed, pulp, natural or natural, is one of the first things you'll notice like right away. So a really good natural coffee, if you like the flavor of that deep, sticky fruit, you can, you, you only get that from that processing. So a natural coffee is gonna taste like a natural coffee to me, kind of first and foremost, I'll be able to pick that out. And then from there go like, okay, now that we've gotten past that, what variety is this? You know, what kind of like, was it wet fermented or dry fermented? All that kind of stuff is kind of secondary. Um, but for me, the most obvious immediate flavor is, is it washed or natural? Yeah. 
kind of like we talked about, like those are the two main ones. Uh, we could put things like the elevation that it was grown at, um, like how, how high up on a mountain was that. Some people will, will do that. Um, but, but honestly, I, I think that, that of the variables that happened before the roaster, those are the two main ones that'll tell you the most about what to expect. It's more for like, for like a customer who doesn't know like everything about coffee, looking at a bag, they can say, okay, it's a natural process and it's a bourbon. So from that, if I know what that means, I can deduce what I can expect from this. Um, and anything out from that, I, I wouldn't really even know. As long as it's good, I don't know if I could tell you, like just by taste, if it was grown at 1700 meters or 1400 meters. Um, or, or really other more esoteric variables. I think that those two really tell you what, you're, what you need to know. So it's hard to pin down a favorite. It's like saying, what's your favorite band? That changes all the time. Um, I've really enjoyed lately, which speaks kind of directly to what we've been talking about, is that we had uh, two Ethiopias on next to each other, the Ethiopia Arty, Ethiopia Arty wash process and the Ethiopia Arty natural process. And we were able to sell them side by side to really tell exactly what processing does to a coffee. Um, we don't really know the variety of that coffee. It, it's Ethiopia heirloom, which means that um, because of the way coffee in Ethiopia is, is kind of picked and gathered and, and processed, um, it, the washing station is the one that controls the, the processing. And then they take coffee cher they buy coffee cherries from kind of everyone around them. Uh, so they don't really necessarily know who's bringing what but they do know what they did to process it after that. Uh, so we had this great um, Ethiopian coffee that's the same coffee from the same washing station just processed two different ways. And the natural had that like sticky pulpy fruit. Uh, the wash was so crisp and clean and citrusy and floral. And it was just a really great uh, magnifying glass on what processing does to a coffee like that. It was really cool all other things being equal what is processing about. And they're also both phenomenal. Uh, our splash, our summer blend, was just the combination of the two. So it was really cool to have, to drink the washed one week, to drink the natural the next week, and then drink the blend the week after and just see like all the different ways that processing can put a lens on the exact same coffee. Very, very cool. Yeah.